Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Xa Talk Show. Today is September sixteenth, Monday, two thousand nineteen, eight o'clock p.m. San Francisco time. Oh, I need to hold on a second. So no one is here. No one is here yet. Today is Monday. Monday eight o'clock. So this time, so I guess this time is not a popular time for everyone. And、uh, I do have one person watching. So say hi, and、uh, let me know what topic you like to talk about. Just type in the chat box, and.、Uh, Xa Talk Show. This show is pretty easy going.、Uh, you just pick a topic, and we can talk about that. It can be technical programming languages tutorial,、uh, and、uh, sundry interesting things. Okay. Now let me now on the left panel, on the left window, you can see all the Emacs commands I call. Okay. Let's create Xa Talk Show. Today's date.、Uh, today's date. Start a new page. Create a new HTML page. Make it a、uh, li list. Put it here.、Uh, the, and、uh, then open the file. Show in browser. Okay. So this is gonna be today's notes. And since there's no one here, let us. Let me just talk random then. Until someone is here and say something, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Now, Xa Talk Show. Okay, so random topic. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Let me let me get this here, so I can kind of see myself. Okay, random topic. Now let's go to Xadi website. Let's see what we、uh, have to say. Now here is a section about keyboard. This flash drive is fantastic.、Uh, you go buy it. Just go to Xadi Xadi keyboard. Just search for that. You'll find it. My keyboard blog and、uh, this we talked about the other day. Okay, so that's about keyboards. Oh, one more thing. Now I've said this before. Never ever buy this webcam. This is Logitech C920 or C922. They are pretty much the same, and they are highly recommended online. You see them everywhere in in reviews, and they'll say, "Oh, this is a good one. Buy this one." Don't buy that one. That's the one I'm using、uh, right now. You are seeing me. It's the it's got autofocus problems. So if you are reviewing keyboard, anything close. It won't focus, okay.、Uh, it won't focus. It'll just like go in, in, out, and end up in a fuzzy. And if you go to Amazon reviews, you can see the some of the bad reviews、uh, saying that. But you know, but you know, typically all the reviews says you know recommend buy this one. It's it's kind of a lie.、Uh, I cannot imagine people honest. Like honestly, most people do not see the autofocus problem. So possibly there is some, you know, paid reviews. You know, th these days you you can never know because lots of these are going on in the background. You know, I pay you, you say good things about me.、Um, so anyway, don't buy this Logitech C920. Okay. Now, however, I know this one is pretty good. This one is、uh, some kind of. Uh, nameless brand. Okay, I, I suppose this is from China. You know, they just have a random brand name, Enzano. Okay. Anyway, so this one, at least according to Amazon, it's got pretty good reviews, and it it has autofocus and does not have the fuzziness problem. So I recommend buying this. Buying this one, I'm going to get it so that I can actually do reviews on keyboard. Good morning, Barrio. Uh, so yeah, so I I think you know I recommend this one. This one is only sixty dollars. 
you know, I'm talking about those under, you know, around sixty dollars, seventy dollars. Same thing, same thing with this. Okay, but of course, if you have, you know, if you are a programmer, you work for Google or whatever, you can buy, you know, you can spend three hundred, four hundred dollars buy a good one. Okay, but for you know, if you don't have that much money, I think I'm going to get this one. Uh, so that's about uh, webcam. Uh, so Barrio, uh, what where you are from again, Barrio? And so what? Uh, what is today's topic? Like pick a topic. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to go random. You know, just type type a topic, please. So keyboard, that's about keyboard. And about programming, there are something interesting to say. Uh, Oh Houston, okay, right, Houston, <laughs> Houston. Every time, every time I hear I hear Houston, the the uh, you know I'm thinking Houston, we got a problem. That's <laughs> that's the thing. So so you are a programmer, right? Uh, Emac list. Okay, so let's let's talk about Emac list then. Yeah, let's 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 uh, let's just do that right away. Okay, Emac list. Uh, but okay, so which topic though? Uh, let's see what we have here. So we have a let's copy that. Okay, it's too small to see. So we have. Um, so let's talk about Emacs Lisp. Let's see what are the topic. Emacs Lisp, write a English to Braille command. Okay, Emacs Lisp demo HTML brackets to HTML. Okay. Both of them are uh, good to topics. Uh, which one you prefer? We can go do one of them first. Any, uh, yeah, it's better if you always tell me, you know, because. So, so I write a major mod for a domain specific language. Okay, that's cool. What is it? Like, uh, you know, feel, feel free to post your links and stuff, you know, okay. So actually, let me get a drink. So let's talk about uh, demo xi HTML bracket to HTML. Let, let's do that first. Then we talk about Emacs Lisp. You know, e yeah. So okay, let's let's let let's do a demo of the xi HTML bracket to HTML. Okay. Again, remember the left the left window shows all my Emacs commands. Every command I call is going to show up there. So if you don't know what I'm doing, like oh, what is that command that does that? For example, let me do this. Ding. Okay, undo. Ding. Undo. Go here. Ding. Undo. Okay, that deletes the whole block of code. And that commands. If you look at the left window, you can see that command is start delete current text block. And if you search that, you'll you'll find the code on my website. You, uh, almost always, most of them. So okay, so let's talk about the uh, start delete bracket to HTML uh, thing. So let's describe function, paste the function name, enter. So Emacs give you the documentation for the function. Then press tab, and you can jump to the function, jump to the source code. So here is the uh, function. Here is the function. So let's see. Uh, okay. Okay, it's a bit long. It's like two hundred lines. Okay. So sub HTML bracket to HTML. Let me demonstrate what does that do first. Okay. So hold on a second. Let me open a new buffer. Switch to HTML. Switch to the. Uh, buffer. Where is it? Oh yeah, so switch to the same buffer. Then oh, I need to magnify. Uh, you know because people have mentioned the text may be too small. So is that better? So anyway, so let's go back. Let me demo demonstrate what this do exactly. So so show in browser. Okay, that's my uh, some talk show for today. Type a date. Yes, correct. So for example, I want to say. I just read a article titled "Modern Society." 
uh, oops, hold on. Okay, and make it a paragraph showing browser. You see, I use these uh, angle brackets. Now, this angle bracket is called, let's describe char. The name of that uh, bracket is called left angle bracket. Now, that is actually a Chinese bracket, okay? So, so anyway, so, I so in Chinese punctuation, that bracket typically is used to enclose titles. Book title, TV title, article title, or chapter name, section name, things like that. You, uh, by tradition, by convention, you use angle bracket. This is a tr uh, traditional Chinese punctuation usage, okay? Now, for, for example, in English, the tradition is to uh, ita it italize it. For example, in English, typically you would say, select that, uh, insert a tag, I, okay, show. Okay, show in browser. You see, I just read the article titled Modern Society, you know, italized. That's the uh, English tradition. But in Chinese tradition, there are many, okay, I mean, uh, another tradition is use a kind of squeak, squiggly underline on anything that's a title. But anyway, angle bracket is kind of the traditional, one of the convention. So, uh, in fact, let me show you article. I want to show you article. Xali Chinese Peng, uh, actually Xali Unicode, okay, Xali Unicode. Okay, Unicode search Xali, yes, that's my site, go there. And then scroll down, you have a bracket section. Bracket. Now this page shows you all possible brackets in Unicode, all of them, okay? If it's not on this page, it doesn't exist. Uh, so you can see all these, you know, this parenthesis, square bracket, they are typical. Then you have curly quotes, single curly quote, double curly quote, French quote, or sometimes called gullet. Or, you know, I don't know how to pronounce it. But anyway, French quote or angle quote. Then you have full size, you know, you have many variations. You, some of them are math brackets, some, some of them look fancy. So anyway, these are all the brackets. Okay, let's copy that, paste it here. Um, okay, and let me talk about the Chinese bracket. So this, uh, this, 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 uh, especially this line. Okay, all these are Chinese brackets. Corner bracket, angle bracket, double angle bracket, lenticular bracket. Total is shell bracket, uh, and uh, you have uh, total is left total is shell bracket, left black total is shell bracket. Well, actually, the the here over here the the font is incorrect. This one should be white, like it should be outlined. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think the font is incorrect here. But anyway, these are. Chinese brackets. So if you read Chinese, you know, you go to Chinese website, you see this bracket often. And, but actually it's quite useful in English context because, you know, brackets is a, one of the basic, it's a syntactic unit. It's, it's kind of, it's one of the unique, it, it, it is a character that has the unique property such that they comes in matched pairs. So whenever you have, you know, a bracket pair, they, 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 you know, they have the property and it's also obvious that they enclose some text. So this is, uh, these are very good for, you know, for English, for example. So anyway, so that's about Unicode characters. And let me talk about, uh, let me just mention Chinese punctuation for those of you interested in on that. Uh, I used to have a link here. I guess I removed it. Okay, so search for Xali Chinese punctuation. Okay, I have a article that explains what is the difference. I mean, what does Chinese, I mean, you know Chinese characters, right? Chinese texts are all Chinese characters. But 
what is their punctuation? How do they differ from English? So this article explained that. Basically, it's the same as English, okay? Except you have, you know, you have the typical period, comma, colon, semicolon, uh, question mark, exclamation mark, you know. Uh, but you also have some of the, you know, uh, special brackets. So anyway, let me post this here. That's a part of what we are talking about. Then, actually, let me let me clean this up. So these two are the things we want to talk about. So that's about Chinese punctuation. Okay. Now close that. Close that, and uh, let let's talk about. So let let me finish talking about this. So I wrote this. You know, I wrote, I read an article titled "Modern Society." Now I use the convention to bracket this in um, angle bracket. Then look look at the left window. I mean look look look. I'm going to call a command and transform it. Look, press a key and it becomes site. You see, it becomes HTML site tag. Now show in browser. Now it looks nice. It's red and italicized. So this is my own convention. Whenever I have a title, I make it red and italicized so that any title can stand out. Because italicized text, they, they don't stand out that much. I want titles to stand out. So it, this title can be applied to book title, uh, website title, you know, some website article title, or movie title. You know, what, what movie you, you watched, Spider-Man, you know, you can say Spider-Man. So that's so the command I just called, let's undo, okay, undo, Let, let's do it again. You see? So the command I just called is called xhtml brackets to html. And the way I, you know, so the way I do this is just my own convention. So whenever I have a title, first of all, I, I make them into a angle bracket. This is the title, you know, I put them inside the angle bracket. Then I call the command to to transform into a uh, site tag. C site is for st citation, you know. Typically, it means title. Now, also, this is not just for this use. There are other uses. For example, I want to have a code. For example, x equals to three plus five. Three plus five. Okay. Now, suppose this is a code, right? Uh, so I I put them into corner bracket. You see. Uh, can you see? Uh, hold on a second. Is this too small or what? Okay. So I put them into a corner bracket like that. Then I call the command again, and they become code. You know, the HTML tag code. So make a paragraph showing browser. You see code. Any code. My own convention is that they are colored red, and they are also using monospace font. So that's just my own convention. But anyway, the point of showing them is to is to tell you about this command I'm using. It is this command that does the job. Xi HTML bracket to HTML. So they convert any type of bracket to to H HTML tags. Uh, okay, so but why am I talking about this command? Is there something I want to do? No, I guess not. Yeah, I just so I, I I guess it's just a demo demo of this Emacs command, uh, and this Emacs command. Oh, I don't have a HTML page for it. Like I don't have it on my website. So maybe I sh we should add that, or we should uh, we should jump to the next topic, which is which is. Uh, Write a Emacs list command to convert English letters to Braille. Uh, so let me read a, a question from Barrio. So Barrio says, uh, it's actually not a language in a strict sense. It's a simulation program that has several hundreds of even thousand keywords. OK. Anyway, I'm trying to come up with good key bindings to move to move to next previous keyword or section of the code file, okay? As an XVimer, I also use evil mod and not sure if I'm already I'm ready to give it up. The problem is that evil steals all good key bindings, okay? Such as square brackets, okay? 
and so on. What would you recommend? Okay, that question, the question about key binding choices, that is actually a difficult one. And there is no easy answer. Okay, it doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna run into problems. Why? Because if you are an Emacs user using Emacs key bindings, basically all the key binding, all the good ones are taken. Okay, now let me categorize them into two group of users. Default Emacs key binding users and Vim users. Okay, you are a Vim user. Okay, let's talk about that later. But let, let me focus on the uh, normal Emacs key binding users. So in that case, what what's a good choices of key bindings? Let me talk about that. So you go to my Emacs blog, Sally Emacs blog, go to Emacs keys. This section is an index of all articles related to key binding. Uh, then you go you look you go to uh, how to define keys. Okay. Now this is a big you know ten like uh, five pages article that describe all you need to know about how to you know uh, write code to create custom shortcuts key shortcuts now there is a subsection on this page that tells you what keys you should not use and what keys are good choices now I'm going to skip uh, what keys to avoid uh, basically you want to avoid any control plus question mark and uh, avoid any control edge oh, sorry. okay control plus edge don't do that avoid any escape key don't don't create a key binding that involves escape key do not do any key binding involves control plus left square bracket neither okay don't do that and do not use any control shift letter okay and do not use control m do not use any key binding that involves enter do you know and do not use any key binding involves control i or the tab key okay Th those are the ones you you should not use why well that's a bit more detail you can read the page okay you, you know read just 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 go to my website and read it later okay so i'm gonna type that page here okay so that those are the keys you don't want to you don't don't bind those keys unless you already you are a master of key binding like you don't who you know you don't care what I say you already know everything <laughs> so in that case you know you are on your own of course you, you know the stuff but for now you know just trust me don't just don't 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 bind any of those keys okay for for the sanity of your <laughs> your life okay now what what's some good keys the good keys are function keys okay f f5 to f12 uh emacs has default for f1 to f4 and uh, basically i would say you can use function keys for your own keys okay or control plus function keys or shift plus function keys or alt plus func function keys you know or meta you know depend you know so function key combination or those are good now besides that uh, there are not many good choices okay now I'm talking about normal Emacs users you, do, you don't really it's a it's a hard problem it, you know you can ask anyone each person will have to have different opinions trying to solve it because basically all you know all the easy keys are already used up by either minor mod or by major mod because everyone wants to have easy keys now Emacs assign a set of keys that is designed for cus for user customer customization that is in the Emacs this manual there's a chapter saying that you know it tells all the mod writers that you should not bind these keys because these keys are reserved for users to customize Emacs what are those keys those are F5 to F9 and Control C followed by one single letter. Okay, that is it. So Emacs officially reserve these keys for the user. So you can be sure that uh, it is true that no major mod or minor mod will use those keys. 
So when you use those keys, you'll be okay. There will be no conflict. But those are not good keys because F5 to F9, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there are only five keys. I mean, typically you want, you have 10 more keys you want to customize, you know, I mean, for your own commands, if you use Emac long enough. So that's only six keys, that's not enough. And the control plus C letter, that's, you know, that's too many keys. I mean, if, if you have some commands you use every, you know, a few times a minute, that's too many keys. You rather pe prefer, let's say, control T or control Y or, or something, you know, that's much better for you because many default control keys you don't use. So, in summary, Emacs manual gives, gives you these keys that, that says these are for user keys. But in practice, that's not very good. So you, you could, you know, you, you could use function keys. Function keys is not also not a very good solution because for many people, they don't have function keys with, you know, they don't have a keyboard with function keys. Or on the Mac, by default, the function keys does you know sound volume up volume down eject these things like that you know so you don't have function keys so anyway so what is the solution there's the in, in short there's no good solution so you just have to kind of um, find your way find a way now I do have a solution now let me let me talk about this solution but before we do that let me talk about the Vim situation the Vim users okay for Vim users Basically, you have the same problem because if you are a Vim user or, or evil mod user, right? All the keys are used up. You know, all the keys are used up. So what can you do? You either go back to the what the Emacs menu suggests. You know, Control C letter. That's you know, and that's only twenty six keys. You know, that's not many. You know, so so you also have a problem. Now, let me recommend a suggestion. Okay. The, so my my solution is key sequences. Okay, let me tell you about that. Okay, key se sequences. Now let me read the comments first. Okay. So Barry, who who else is here today? Nobody. It feels so cold. Come on guys, five people, post questions, okay, question stuff. So Barrio, Barrios from Houston says, uh, control arrow or old arrow. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so Barrio says, how about control arrow or old arrow? That's good. But some mod, some mod, okay, also use that. Now remember, you know, like we what we mentioned, you know, Emacs by Emacs manual, it by officially it reserves certain keys for users customization. Now, those does do not include control arrows and old arrows. So some mod actually use that. For example, if I recall correctly, there is a like if you go to practical practical Emacs, you go to manage Windows topic. You go to um, uh, effective window management, save split windows configuration. You have, um, anyway, that, I mean, uh, let's not forget about looking at, but, uh, um, you know, so, so, you, so control arrow, old arrow, that's good, but some mod will use it also. Also, those are not super. Op that those are not optimal keys. Okay, those not uh, are not optimal because you need to move the hand one hand to control, one hand to arrow. You know, that's that's then then move back. So you know that's not optimal. But th those are good. Okay, you can use those. You know, key binding is an art. You know, part science, part art, and also different people. It very very greatly. Also depends on what keyboard you you use. I mean, if you yeah, let's talk about that as well. Let me keep let let's don't let's do keep talk about that because that's also an important critical topic. Okay, let me 
let me post it here so I don't forget uh, oh yeah and we need to actually start to work on emac list okay so so it also depends on keyboards like most people you know you, you are used to these PC keyboards okay that that's great uh, so to you control is here arrow is there and but a lot of other people they are using different keyboard and and that changes things entirely because to you in your brain you think oh we should control T something everything you know control T is the best you know but to other people they like they, they they are using this kind of keyboard so their mindset is in hundred percent is totally different from yours but you never imagine but because most of us you know we live in our in, in, in real life we only know 10 people 50 people you know we we don't see the whole outside so you don't imagine you you never thought of what other people are using what's their situation you know so so keyboard actually come into a play majorly so whenever you talk about key binding, remember you also must you must remember what are you saying? I mean, what are you saying, and what what is the keyboard you are talking about? So to you, I don't know what keyboard you are using. You know, anyway, control arrow. So that, you know that's good. But just but when it comes to some key bindings, key keyboard matters greatly. You know, make, makes a huge difference in your key binding, in your choices of key binding, or which key binding you like. It has major impact. It change. In fact, it changes your entire key binding set. Uh, even for example, if you are mostly working with laptops or laptop style keyboards, that's entirely di different from. If you are using, you know, these full-sized uh, keyboards, you know, entire different experience, and and your choices of keys will be different, okay. And also, even all these PC keyboard, you see, all these PC keyboard, you know, they are pretty much the same, right? You know, control or they are all in a pretty much the standard position, but actually not. When you actually use a keyboard, then Suppose you buy another keyboard. You, 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 you know, it'll take you a few days to get used to because even though they are all kind of the same, but actually there's a minor details. The key, you know, the gap size, you know, little micro details. They actually has a big Im impact. Okay, not negligible impact to to which keys you prefer to press. Okay, things like that. So keep keyboard in mind. And also, let me just mention, you know, I study keyboard, right? I'm a keyboard fanatic. So, uh, so you know, go to my website, you know, Xali Keyboard, and uh, read the articles, find the keyboard you like. If you like it, buy it from my website. Okay, so that that way, uh, I get some financial support. Okay, that's about keyboard. Now, so let's let me go. Let's go back to talk about. What key binding I recommend? There is one. There's a good solution. The solution is key sequences. Now this page, this page is a tutorial on how how do you define key sequences in Emacs? Okay, so let's uh, post it here. Okay, key sequences. These are today's topic. Okay, key sequence. Uh, so let's go back to the article. Key sequences. Uh, Okay, so what does that mean? That means so you just, for example, F nine, F six, you press, you know, you you you, it's almost like hunt hunt and peck, you know, like imagine imagine your hand is a pecker like a bird, you know, F nine, F six, that's that's key, key sequence, okay, F nine, F seven, that's another thing, F nine, F eight, F nine, F nine, okay, <laughs> you know, F one, F five. That's called that's key sequences. Once you know key sequences has many several advantages. They are great. They are you know this is what I recommend. This is I fully recommend. You should do this. You use key sequences. For example, I'm using Xafly keys, right? I mean you are a Vim Evil Mod user. That's great. Uh, Xafly keys is kind of like Evil Mod, kind of like Vim. Okay, it's a model. So you have insert mod, command mod, but also I have key sequences. For example, 
I press, let me show you, okay, space, control, edge, okay. Now Emacs pop up all this, uh, this page. These are all my key sequences. You can see, go to the bottom, there are about 200 of them. So if I press space, space tab is one thing, space 3 is another thing, space 6 is another thing, space G is another command, space K is another command, and so on, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, all that. All together, there are 200 of them. All these are key sequences, meaning that, you know, it's a just sequence of keys. And I limit myself to no more than three keys, three keys key sequence. More than three is too much. Okay, three. Key, so two key, you know, two sequence of two keys or three. Okay, the most frequently used command you give it sequence of two keys. The you know less used you give it sequence of three keys. For example, look at here. I have space T, space space T one, space T two, space T three, so on and space T, A, space T, C, and so on, you know, key sequences. Now, when you have a key sequence, the first key, we call it the leader key, you know, the beginning key, the leader key. This is, this is important because, so, so, so when I, so if you look at these key, key sequences, what if you want to enter a space? Now, because I'm using XAR model mod, XAR flight keys, so I have model and command, I mean, insert mod and command mod. So when I'm in insert mod, space just insert space. When I'm, when I'm in command mod, space key is the leader key for key sequences. So that's why I have all these key sequences. Highly recommended. And uh, for evil mod, uh, for evil mod, okay, uh, Barrio, I know there is a package. Now, I don't know exactly what's the name. They also have key sequences, just like what I have here. Okay, their key choices is different from mine. But uh, are you familiar? If you know it, say it, okay, A anyone. So that is I recommend, Barrio. You know, get, get that key sequence package uh, and try to create your customer keys, custom keys there, like, for example, let's say if space key is a leader key, then then the second key choose a key that that is for all your custom keys. So for for example, uh, for example, space T, anything that begins with space key is all your personal key bindings. Okay, that is my solution. Key sequences. Now. One of the issues is how do you choose a uh, the beginning key, like the leader key? Okay, if you have function keys, for example, you can make it F5. So whenever you want a key sequence, you know, just pick F5. F5, then, then A, B. F5, F7, F9. F5, A, C. That's another command, okay? Things like that. So you have, so one advantage of key, there, there are at least two, advantages of using key sequence. One, it's easier on the hand. You know, when you do a control combination, that's actually, that's the worst for your hand health. Don't ever, if you possibly can, don't ever uh, use control or alt meta sequences. Don't do that. I mean combination, don't, don't do those codes. Use key sequence. So key sequence, one advantage is easier on your hands. The second advantage is that you actually have a lot more uh, key possibilities than the key combination. Uh, I have article on that. You know, I have like tens of articles. So let, let me show you, okay. So uh, let's go to key binding. Uh, let's go to my keyboard block. Let me go to show you that article. So you go to key binding, you go to the first article, how many keyboard shortcuts are there? So in this page, I calculate how many possible combinations of key binding you have. When you have codes keys involving control, alt, shift, windows key, okay? You compute how many possible possibilities are there. Then you also compute how many possibi 
possibilities you have if you use key sequences. You know, I compute. It turns out key sequences, you know, in both cases, if you involve three key, I mean, key sequences it just has far more possibilities than, than key codes, okay? You can read this article for detail. Uh, so that's about that. So let me paste that article here, okay? Uh, so, so far so good, Mario. I mean, give, give me some feedback. I mean, I mean, does that make sense or... Uh, okay, so... So, yeah, so, so back to... So let's conclude. So key sequence is good because it's good for your hand health and also it actually creates much more possibilities. Meaning that you can have you know, you will not run out of keys. Like sometimes you have lots of commands. Oh, which, you know, how do you, all the key bindings that you already have used, you know, you, you will have less of that problem. So that's about key sequences. And that concludes that topic about, about what is a good key binding choices in Emacs. Okay, so Rahav, Rahav says, good morning. Hey man, I've been using your single key binding for a year now. F10 terminal, F6 close. Fantastic. Uh, just want to say thanks for a great tip. Thank you. Thank you, Rao. Mohammed says, Hexar, can you talk about your favorite Emacs packages? Uh, yeah. I, uh, let's, I think, I think let's do Emacs list because that's a topic we want to, uh, we, we started, you know, uh, Barry asked me before, so let's you know let, let me do that today. Uh, actually, about packages, I don't use much. Okay, I I I think in in my past vid videos this month or last month I've talked about that. Basically, uh, let's see if I can find it. Okay, so I'll talk. Let's 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 see if I can find it quickly. Search for packages. Uh, okay, so anyway, I don't remember when. Like ten days ago, twenty days ago I did a talk uh, that basically I don't I don't use I only use like five pa uh, packages Magit is one of them uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, the Smex is another one that's basically that's the two I rely the most <laughs> okay you 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 uh, your favorite is soft like keys thank you um, Saga, Niha, Yuan Wang Niha. Shishi, what's a bay shang nong the zong wonder, zai, uh, bidi bidi sang, that's it, uh, mekong, yogan, yogan shang bang wo, that's it, uh, uh, woya mang, say, me, hai me, and wo shang, wo shang nong yoga, zaman zong wonder, zai da lu, bidi bidi sang, dun, dun tai. So, um, so you are in China, right? Yuan Wang. So Fasin says, I have a specific question about the package, all the icons styled. Okay, I don't know that package. Uh, but I worry that it may be too specific and wouldn't be helpful to anyone but me. Yeah, I don't know that package. Uh, but if you have a question, just type it, okay? Like, don't, <laughs> I mean, it's better than meta question. Like, can I ask this question? I mean, just type it. If I see, if, if I know the answer, I can answer right away. If I don't know, then, you know, no. You know, t type it, and somebody maybe knows. So I don't know. I haven't tried. I don't. Uh, I haven't heard of that package. Uh, package all the icons tired. Yeah, I don't know what. Uh, which is that? You know, feel free to just type the questions. Okay, so let's do Emac this. Uh, let's do Emac this. Let's let's uh, let's do this one. Okay, thank, thanks, Mario, and good morning, uh, Pablo. Pablo is uh, making a do-it-yourself keyboard. <laughs> so that's great. So pa Pablo is making that. So Pablo, do you have a link? You know, post it. Feel free. You know, it's, it's, it's good. You know, post it. If you have a link to the photo of your current status of your do-it-yourself keyboard. Uh, okay, let, let's talk about Emac Lisp. Okay, so I wanted to because that's a one of the topic we want to do today. So let's let's begin talking about Emac Lisp. And uh, um, 
in MacBeast. Yeah. So the, the 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 task we want to do is to create a command that converts English to Braille commands. Okay. So first of all, let's go to uh, first of all let's go to Unicode Braille. Let me show you what is that about. Xali Unicode. Okay. Unicode search. Go down, go down. There it is, Braille. Now Braille, as you know, Braille is for the blind. You can like touch and feel and you know read it and you know the dots, uh, pa pattern of dots that represents English letters. Uh, oh, cool. So, uh, so Braille. Look at Braille. It's, this is very interesting for those of you programmers or mathematically inclined, because a Braille Braille is a combinatorial patterns of six dots. In fact, you know the standard Braille are six dots, so you have different patterns. Now the, but there are also eight dots Braille patterns. So you can see those, these are Braille's, Braille patterns. Now let's talk about the standard Braille's. Now standard Braille's, now one of the interesting aspect is combinatorial issue, like mathematics. For example, one of the interesting question is how do you order, you know, the combination of dots? How do you order them? For example, let's look at this section. Okay, this section. This section orders them by dot. So you can see the first group is all single dot. Then the second, you know, all, well, yeah, single dot. You have six possibilities because there are six dots. You know, each each one single dot at different position. You have one, you know, six possibilities. Then followed by two dots patterns. So two dots, two dots two dots, two dots, you know, you have again, uh, you have more than six possibilities. You have, I don't know how many, so uh, six pick two combinatorics. Th there's a formula. Okay, there's a math formula. Well, we can look into, but that's that's going into math. So let's skip that. But anyway, this is interesting because you you want to order these dots. So one way is to order them by how many number of dots? So beginning with just one dot, then you have two dots, then you have three three dot patterns like this, and four, five, and then six. You know, six dots. That's that's one way to order it. Another way to order it is you. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, this section. Sort by name or name by dot position. <laughs> what it means is that you order them by you begin with one dot, and from now on, any subsequent uh, cell, Braille cell, always have that dot on. For example, this one begin with with the upper left dot. So the second one also have upper left dot. In fact, all the rest have upper left dot on on you know on there. Until you you run out of possibilities. Until so, for example, until this one, this is the first one that does not have upper left dot. <laughs> so that so this is another way to order it. That's not a complete description. But anyway, I wanted to mention you know the ordering problem is an interesting issue uh, because you have several orders and also let me mention Braille each dot has a name. They are uh, named like this. They, the, each dot is associated with a one number. So they are named 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and according to position. So top left is 1. Then second row left is 2. Third row left is 3. Then uh, right column first is 4. Then then right column second is five. Right column third row is six. You know, you, you order them that way. 
So, so once you have a name for each dot, then given any braille pattern, you have a sequence of a numbers, sequence of numbers that represents this braille character. So, for example, let's see this one. You can see uh, it's called the Unicode name is braille pattern dots one. Okay. On the other hand, let's look at this character. Let's look at this character. The name is braille pattern dots one two three four five six, meaning all dots are present. Let's look at this one. This one is named braille dots braille pattern dots one two. Meaning that you know the the dot named one is present and the dot named two is present. And this one, for example, is named braille pattern dots three five. You know the the three the dot three and dot five are present. So so this way any braille pattern can have a name, and the name has a unique order because you just order them by uh you know by numerical one two three four five six. So so once you have a name for each braille pattern, now you can order them. By simply using this uh, this name, you know this sequence of number names. So that's another uh, naming. I mean, that's another way to order braille. And when you order braille like that, this is what you get. You see, you see, this is what you get. This uh, this section. So 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 far, you can see three different ways to order braille. Uh, the one with the number of count of dots is the uh, most intuitive. So anyway, that's a braille. Okay, that's some interesting thing part of, uh, about braille. But I wrote this JavaScript uh, application. Look, look, this application translates or converts English letters or words into braille patterns in real time. So, so this I created this. Um, this app, you know, J JavaScript in JavaScript app applet, so that's fantastic. So right now, what we want to do, we want to write a Emacs command. So we press a button, it becomes Braille. Press a button again, it becomes back to English letter. So let's do that. Okay. Um, that will take like twenty minutes or also. So okay, we got seven people watching. So let's let's do that. Let me just do this quickly then. So let's go to Emacs blog. Let's go to actually I have some similar things. So let's go to command examples. And uh, let's go to HTML commands. Do things at point. Insert things. Um, I have. I have a bunch of examples. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Uh, writing major mod. Um, let's go to Emac Lisp Miscellaneous. Okay, so I don't know actually. I don't know where is it the article because there's too many articles. Uh, you know, I, I I wrote so many articles like over the past ten years. I tried to organize them. That's a lot of work. You organize, organize, organize. It still needs to be organized. Uh, 
because uh, so let me try to find the command script examples commands examples okay forget uh, let's just go web search so you open a new buffer saw emacs convert latin okay just type that then you'll find it so there it is emacs latin to gothic so let me sh let me show you these commands okay because because we are going to write a something very similar so type that command there and i'm gonna uh for example type something here and let's see what happens okay now i call the command meta x uh, and i say xa convert latin to uh, gothic okay enter there it is now now let me magnify okay you see so copy that paste it here so let's call it again so okay so let's call it again to convert it back okay so so let me try another command xa convert latin to run okay now it becomes run characters run is a another asian character so copy that wait and uh, 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 we can convert it back okay uh you just press control u first okay now we are back okay so these are some examples of emacs commands that does this kind of conversion okay they are kind of too small so let's add a class okay class big random number okay and okay and then go to the top of the buffer uh shrink a little bit shrink and uh, insert a style okay that then that then switch to CSS mod font size font size 2 em that's good close reopen show in browser there you go okay so there uh, you have it why is this not oh okay so this gotta actually this gotta go here showing browser okay so so you have a command to convert to gothic and uh, let, let, let me type let me show you the command okay uh, so here's the source code here's my HTML page and uh, copy the file path close that close that put the link here and go down uh, gothic so let's go to gothic copy the file path put it here linkify and you can see they are all linked here and uh, so what we want to do is we want to do something very similar to this because we want to convert to um, we want to convert it to the braille right so what we do let's just copy this code here okay uh, convert to gothic latin okay latin to gothic uh, describe function go to the source code here is the code copy close and uh, create a new buffer emac lisp paste it there open into a new buffer now here's the code uh, and now we want to change the name convert latin to uh, braille okay let's say uh, to braille okay and uh, let's forget about the documentation we can fix that later um, then all we need to change is this section 
basically we need to you know because here we have a, a list of pairs that is a map between Latin characters and uh, the and uh, the Gothic alphabet we want a map of letters to Braille so okay so here let me do this okay so this this let's call space to new line okay uh, wait and that's that's not what, what we want so actually select that uh, copy that um, query replace okay that's better so here is the this is the the map we want to change once we change the map basically everything is already done <laughs> because we copy the code already so any com any comments guys comments or is it is this boring you know is this boring or you know say it i know so first so so let's let, let's do it let's speed up then let's go to so let's go to my unicode website let's go to braille okay that's there is a braille website i'm going to the braille website because i can look at my javascript code to get a map so search for go to the top search for dot js uh there it is unicode braille so here is the the map this is the javascript that does the conversion so all we want is to get the map to grab the map so copy copy it close close we don't need that anymore close now we are back in emacs then we just need to uh, paste this and we need to convert this javascript array syntax to emacs syntax okay so what we do is we cop we copy the whole section we narrow to region and uh, now we remove the ending bracket so let's see uh, yeah we want to convert it to emacs right so actually remove all remove all comma actually so query replace delete comma do that for all and query replace uh, that comma do it for all so I think that's that's the Lisp uh, syntax that should be right so widen so widen that's correct so this is the old um, gothic so we don't need it anymore let's see so we have English letter to Gothic, right? We don't need it anymore. So, okay. Delete that. Okay, so we have that. Uh, and why don't we compact it so that compact, compact, okay? So we can see the whole buffer. Okay. Basically, I think that's it. We can actually try it. Then maybe possibly explain what's going on with the code. Uh, so, eval buffer. So now Emacs knows the command. Now let's just, let's try it. Okay, copy this, paste here, select it, call, call Latin to Braille, enter. Yay, I think it actually worked. Magnify. Yeah, it worked. You know, Emacs Emacs for some reason is using this font where the empty dot dot are shown as white dots. But you know that's the well that's the let's compare. So for example, let's go to my application here, Unicode Braille. Uh yeah, so so that's the English, right? So wait, hold on let's see if this works okay copy the english paste it here uh, sh shrink okay and copy the braille here copy back to emacs paste 
okay so you actually you need it to be bigger so delete that new buffer uh, actually new uh, let's go over here new buffer paste magnify okay so that is that now let's try the same thing in Emacs okay copy that paste it here call the command saw convert Latin to Braille okay now let's see if this line and this and this line are the same okay let's do a search search indeed they are the same so it actually it works so actually we just we have just uh, created we have just written this command now now okay no no questions guys barrier what do you think is that I mean does <laughs> make sense or barrier Mohammed and Yuan Fazin say something so, so does that make sense so far so actually so now we are kind of done and uh, wait am I am I am, am I let's see let me check yeah I'm I'm okay I'm on so now we are actually kind of done so I mean de de depends on what you guys want we we, we would uh, I can you know I, normally I would just explain the code a little bit how it works or if you rather see something else like uh, you know let me know So that's cranberry juice, then some tea. Comment, guys, comment, no comment. Okay, I'm going to. Okay, I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll explain some codes for five minutes, and that'll be it for today. So this. So this emac list code. First of all, we have we have three arguments: begin, end, and reverse direction. Okay, begin, end is the beginning position. Begin, end are positions, cursor positions. Like you know, emacs determine cursor positions by by what's called point. Basically, it's just a number. So in the beginning of a buffer, the cursor position is one. And you can find out by calling describe char. For example, let's call it describe char, and you can see position one of one five five nine. So one five five nine that means the end of a buffer. The last position is one five five nine. For example, let's call describe char. Uh, okay, describe char. You see one five five nine of one five five nine. So that's a cursor position. Okay. And uh, so this function takes three arguments. Begin ends are cursor positions, and this reverse direction is either true or false. True means reverse the direction, meaning that you are converting Braille to English letters. Now, if false, that means do not reverse direction. So you are converting English letters to Braille. Now, in Emacs, true is represented by the symbol T. Okay, and false by convention is nil. That's the Emacs convention. True is T, false is nil. In fact, anything not true is uh, um, anything not nil is true. Okay, that's the Emacs list convention. Uh, uh, let's go to my Emacs list tutorial. You can check, double check. Let's double check. Emacs basics, printing, arithmetics, convert float int, true, false. Okay. In e in Elis, the symbol neo is false. Anything else is true. Also, neo is equivalent to the empty list, so empty list is also false. By convention, the symbol T is used for true, right? So. So anything not neo is true, and by convention symbol T is uh, useful true. So anyway, this function takes three arguments. Now, when you call it interactively, for example, let's call it. Uh, for example, let's 
something, okay? Some, and let's call it convert Latin to Braille. Okay, it converted. But I didn't give any argument. How does it find out where is the beginning position, where is the end position, and whether to convert, you know, or reverse direction? I didn't say, but how does Emacs know? Emacs knows because you are in Emacs list, you can use this interactive clause. So here we have interactive is uh, interactive if user region is true if user region is true then then return this list otherwise return this this list user region p means if there's a selection then it's true okay so if there's a selection then i return this list which which means you know region beginning region end and current cruiser, uh, current prefix arg. So if I have a selection, this list will ret be returned, and this list will be f fed into the parameters of this function. Why? Because that is the job, that is the purpose of interactive. So when you have an interactive, and when the interactive returns the list, that list will become the parameters of this function. So that is why even I didn't tell Emacs, you know, where where I wanted to begin or end. Emacs knows because interactive uh, clause is a way for Emacs to automatically uh, feed whatever you want to give to the function's argument when a function is called interactively. That is the purpose of the interactive thing. So if user if use region P is false, meaning that basically it means I don't have a region, like I don't have a selection, then what I do? So I say I you know I say here, I return this list. It says line beginning position, line end position, and current prefix arc. So line beginning, you know, so it just Basically, current line. So consider current line as the region. That's what what is what it does. Now the the current prefix arg is um, that's basically that's control u. Okay, that's that's basically like when you press con like for for some commands, you can change its behavior by pressing control u before you call the command. So when you do that, when you press control U first, that the value will be saved in the variable current prefix arg. Okay. So that that is why you have this. I mean that's what current prefix arg is for. And current prefix arg the value is feed to the parameter reverse direction uh, true or false. So that's how Emacs knows I want to, you know, which direction I want to convert. Okay, no no comments, guys? Okay, so the, I think uh, then um so that that is how you so we so far we just explained how this function gets its parameters and what what does the parameter means and then then basically what you do is you just go through um you just go through find and replace like you know you in a buffer you Basically, the heart of the program is this is this line, okay? So while search for word, some character, okay? Now if it's found, then just replace it. Replace it with the rep you know the second element. The the you know. So what does so what does this do? Is that you see this part? We have a map, and we map this function to this map and what is that what is that map that map is this 
a character map from letter to braille or from braille to letter. Now depending on the reverse direction, you see you see this this code here, this if statement. Uh, oops. This if statement. So if reverse direction is true, then you do this. Okay. Otherwise you just return the Latin to Gothic map. Okay, that name is bad. So let's change the name. Latin to Gothic. Let's change it to Latin to Braille. Okay. Replace, replace, replace. Okay. So so this if block that sets what user map is. Okay, in fact, let's change the code. That's not, let's change the structure of the code. Okay, so let me, uh, so set user map. User map will equals to these, okay. Um, Okay, so, so, so this code is the old code. We are improving it. This one is better. So this this one is better because in the outset, in the beginning, we know what it's doing. It's trying to set a value to use map. Use map is a map we want to use depending on the direction. So, so we are setting the value. What's the value? Well, depends on if the reverse direction is true or not. If it's true, then we have this function. This function basically reverse this list of pairs, reverse each pair in the list and returns a new list. So that is what this part do. But if reverse direction is is false, then we just uh, return, you know, Latin to Braille map you know so it's very good so we have clarified we have simplified this this uh oh here this 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 block block of code we have actually made it better <laughs> so okay so let's copy that again uh let's try let's see if this works select it uh, something select uh okay so call it Braille, it works. Okay. Um, okay. So that's about that. Then, then we just do. We narrow to region. Then we we set case for search nil. We don't want to deal with uh, capital letters. Actually, we want to deal with capital letters. I mean, in Braille, there is no text. Uh, there's no braille characters or, or only correspond to lowercase or cap or, yeah lowercase there's actually no braille cell for capital letters but however when you want to represent capital letters in braille you have a special braille pattern you place in front of a character or a word okay something like that so in Braille, in, in general, you don't have capital letters. So, so in, for, for our purposes, we just want to do search, uh, case for search, meaning that doesn't matter if it's capital case or lowercase, do the conversion. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Uh, and, and then we map, we map a function, this lambda function, to the map, you know, to this map. We go through each pair of you know letter and replacement letter and replacement we go to each one of them for each one of them so for each one of them we we search through the buffer you know go to, first of all go to the beginning of the buffer then while search you know you found that character of the first element if you found it then 
you do the replace. Replace it by the second element in the pair. You know, so that's how this code works. Okay, so I guess that's it for today then. Um, so any questions about that? That's it. That that it, that is it. This uh, function is complete. This function is complete, and everything seems nice. Yes, let's maybe uh, clean it a little bit. Uh, yeah, clean it a little bit. So let's remove the redundant uh, space and so and so on. Then delete it. Paste it back here, color it, show in browser. Scroll down, we have it today. And I'm going to make this uh, into a HTML page on my Emacs website. So it's good, anyone? So hold on a second. I'm, I'm thinking there is something wrong with the chat box or oh, is there still here guys okay so you guys been quiet okay so that's it for today uh yeah that's it for today so thank you guys for watching hope to see you in next episode now, if you like my stuff, I have Emacs tutorial. I have this fantastic Emacs tutorial. You can buy the whole thing for $30, very cheap. I mean, the main thing is that you get this complete Emacs list tutorial from the ground up. Uh, there are not much out there, actually. There are not even much Emacs list books. Uh, so, you know, if you like my stuff, buy it. There is a buy link somewhere here, yeah, at the bottom. And there is this video, I did this video a few months ago about teaching you Emacs Lisp. So you might check it out and buy my tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, bye.